Hey everybody, welcome to Orion. So I guess you've all seen that like the subscription box has done really well and they've been shipping out. You've seen that people have been placing their orders and placing orders for different products that we have on the website. You've seen that the website is finally live. So it's kind of all coming together. Everything that we've been trying to do for the past however many months now is finally coming to fruition. Everything that we've been working towards has finally kind of come together. So that's what we're doing right now. We're kind of getting everything together and kind of going towards the progression that we have been looking to go towards for months now. So it's kind of all coming together perfectly, I guess is the right way, way of saying it, like the perfect storm. So bear with us. We are trying to get everything together as fast as we can, get everything shipped out as quickly as we can. A lot of orders have come through. We appreciate the continued support that you guys have shown us. So what I'm asking for first and foremost during this live, more than anything right now, is a little bit of patience. Just a little bit of patience for the fact that we have been kind of inundated in orders and we are working to get those orders out. We will continue to do that. We're working on it today. We're gonna to work on it tomorrow through the entire rest of the week and try to catch up on everything we have. So if you went to the website when we finally launched it and you placed an order, we're working on getting all of that taken care of. We do not have a ton of staff right off you know, right off the bat. Um, it's me and it's Sean and a little bit more help just kind of getting that taken care of in the very beginning. Um, but I'm asking that you just kind of bear with us and you will be updated and you'll be getting your tracking information and you'll be getting everything that you're looking for to kind of move forward. The more we continue this, the more we kind of start our new process, you know, everything will be streamlined and everything will work a little bit more efficiently. So just bear with us. It will come together. It will get better and everything will just kind of just be more streamless. The more this continues on. What I wanted to do today and the purpose of this live was to kind of discuss some of the products. I know that a lot of you come with a different mindset on products. I understand that a lot of you are coming from using prior products not what you're using right now. And even if you're coming to us not having used where I came from, you still have a learning curve maybe in regards to what Orion has to offer. I want to kind of help you go through that. I'm not gonna go super deep tonight just because it's on the later side and I'm not gonna go into super technical terms on everything, but that will come. I just kind of wanna give people that little bit of understanding that maybe they're lacking and to kind of help them understand a little bit of what makes this different versus what they're used to using in general, no matter what the brand was that you were used to using. Let's tackle base coats and reducers first, because I feel like that's something that a lot of people with the subscription boxes have received. A lot of people have asked a generalized question on, let's, let's tackle that first. When you go to the website, you're gonna see there's two different reducers. Maybe that's something that you're not used to depending on the brand that you're used to using. So when it comes to the Orion system, there is what you see as the 594. 594 is the entire series for solvent, meaning anything a solvent based starts with a 594. That's the prefix of all solvents. Depending on which one you get is what's gonna differentiate between what the solvent is. So when you see UR, that's urethane reducer. When you see BC, that's base coat uh, reducer, so base coat reducer. So when you're looking at UR 60, 70, 80, that's urethane grade reducer in 60, 70, and 80 temps. When you see it in BC, that's base coat reducer in 60, 70, and 80 temps. Now I know that you're not all used to using reducers that have to be used in a base coat system and reducers that are used to being used in a 2K system. This specific line is designed for you to use your base coats accordingly or your 2K reducers accordingly. Meaning if you're going to use a 2K primer, a 2K clear, or a sealer, or a single stage, you need to use the 2K UR series reducers. If you're going to be using something that's gonna be in the Constellation, or the Apollo, or the Galaxy, or any of the factory packs, or any of the OEM colors, we're like yielding you and, and getting you to use the BC series reducers. Those are the base coat series. Now, when you look at them, they're gonna look clear. They're not gonna look that much difference. The difference between these reducers are they're using a clear version of a stabilizing reducer. So when you're using them, make sure that you're using the, the base coat series reducers in the base coats. Make sure that you're using the 2K series in the 2K. 
No issues, just try to stick with that. If something happens and something comes up and you happen to use the 2K version of the reducer in the base coat, nothing catastrophic is going to happen. It's just advised that you use the other BC reducers in the base coat series. That's what we're advising you to do. When it comes to the 2Ks, use the UR series reducers. If you are using someone else's, that's, you know, we're not obviously going to advise you to do that, but realize as long as you're using a high quality reducer, that's going to work. When it comes to the clear coats, let's talk about the different clear coats. Clear coats start with the prefix of 1610. Any clear coat's going to start with 1610 dash the number. If it's dash zero zero, it's inner coat. If it's dash zero one, then that's going to be the easy lower solids clear. If it's dash zero six, then that means you're gonna be using it with the fast. If it's dash 10, that is the stargazer, which is like a medium solids clear. If it's dash 20, then that is the urethane. So Jeff, what you got, you're perfectly fine with using. I took care of your order, so you're good on that aspect. Now, when you're coming to the clears, you're going to notice that when you're going to the website that the clears are going to use reducers, I'm sorry, hardeners that are one temperature. That may be the biggest change that you're used to compared to anything is the fact that the reducers, I'm sorry, the hardeners are gonna be different than what you're accustomed to using. Meaning you're going to the website, you're checking out as a kit, everything's bundled as a kit, but you're gonna notice that you're not gonna have a fast or a medium or a slow. You're gonna have one standard hardener. That's not so different. European lines are very similar to this. Even like the PPG uh, 2021 clear, for instance, uses a 61 catalyst. That's just a standard catalyst, and then you use the reducer to control the temperatures. So the Orion system is going to be very much like that. You do not have to reduce it if you do not want to. If you want to reduce it, you can. We're leaving that up to you guys. So the biggest difference between this line and maybe some other lines that you have been used to is that we're giving more back to the painter, meaning we're giving you more of the ability to dictate how you want to use the line. We're giving you the chance to use the reducer temperature that you want to use if you choose to use it at all. We're giving you the option to use the hardener that goes with the line that you're using, meaning 1620 has its own hardener, 1610 has its own hardener, 1606 has its own, 161006 has its own hardener. Those are true. You have to use that hardener per, per that, meaning don't intermix your hardeners. Everything's going to be color coordinated, meaning the clear will have its own color, the hardener has its own color. Stick within that series. But if you choose to reduce it, that's going to further choose how the product is going to flash if you want it to. The biggest thing you have to realize is if you're coming from a different brand, you're going to realize that things may be flashed a little bit quicker than this is going to. The technology in these resins, the technology in the hardener being used is going to allow this to flash the way that you want it to, the way that you need it to. You're going to want to pick and choose the products that you use depending on the size of the job. You're obviously not going to want to use a fast clear on something that's going to be an all over. You're obviously gonna to wanna to pick and choose what's gonna work best in the scenario of what you're painting. That said, the technology and how these are developed and how they're formulated and how they're all blended is going to work maybe a little bit differently than what you're used to, but in a good difference. Meaning things aren't gonna to flash too quickly. They're gonna flash the way you want. They're gonna flow the way you're looking for them to flow. They're gonna cut and buff differently than what you're used to, but actually nicer. That's probably gonna be one of the nicest things that people realize compared to what they're used to, is that they're gonna cut and buff a lot nicer. That comes with the technology and how it is, a, is blended and how it's created and the technology in the resins and in the hardeners. If you're going to reduce a 2K product, use the 594-UR series. UR is urethane grade reducer, use that in the 2K series. If you're going to reduce your base coats, you should use the 594BC. If you make a mistake, and you use the UR in the BC series, it's not the end of the world. You're perfectly fine. Just make sure that you use what's designed to be used. And this is not something just special to Orion. There are other systems in the entire industry that have base coat stabilizing reducers and urethane grade reducers, and you're supposed to do it accordingly. So this is not something so you know off the wall that you're not gonna be able to keep up with it. It's very simplistic. It's numbered very easily. The instructions are very easy. When you get the original label that we created, everything will be color banded for you to understand that it kind of works together. 
Now, when it goes to affecting cutting and buffing and reducing it in the mill build, anytime you reduce something, you cut the solids. So anytime you reduce something in any way, you're going to cut the solids. The more you cut the solids, the less mill build you're going to get. Now, these products are not super low solids. They're medium to high solids clears. So you adding 5% reduction to help you with the flow if it gets a little bit warmer or if it's a little bit cooler or whatever you choose to do. It's not going to be the end of the world and you adding reducer to it. Just realize that it's better off if you use the products to begin with the way that they're designed for you to use them without reduction. If you choose to reduce them, there is no adverse reactions. It's just going to change the way that the solids are, the way that it flows, the way that it sprays, the way that it reacts. It will not change the cure rate. You using a reducer is not gonna change the way that it cures. Realize that the clears are designed for you to use three coats at one time. If you choose to go past that, follow proper flash times. If you follow flap, uh, pop, proper flash times, you can go to four coats if needed. It's still advised, no matter the brand or product that you're using, that you do not go over three coats in a session. That's just advisable no matter what you're using. So it is advised that you stick within that range. If you feel confident in your ability, confident in, your, in the setup that you have and the flash times and things like that, then you can exceed the three coats if you choose to. Just make sure that you follow the proper procedures and you'll be fine. So a lot of this comes down to skill and technique. If you're somebody who's been spraying for a long time, you have a proper skill, you have a proper technique, you're not going to struggle. If you're somebody that this is new to you, it wouldn't really matter what you're used to using or what you are using. There's gonna be a learning curve no matter. Most painters in the industry are capable of kind of going between no matter what they're used to and curtailing themselves based on that. Meaning you can give someone any product and they can kind of come and go between what they're using and figure out what works best for them. That comes from skill set and what you've done over the course of the years. Obviously, all of these products are meant to have some form of skill and not just a do it yourself or going into it without asking questions. That said, if you are a do it yourself and you've never used it, hit us up. We will walk you through it. We will help you figure out what you need to do, what your techniques are, everything in between to make it where you have the most successful ability that you can possibly have. Now, when someone says, I'm gonna go four to five on all overs, that's fine. If you're capable of doing so, and you understand the flow, and you understand the flash, and the cure rate, and the temperature, then you can do that. I would never advise someone to go past three coats, especially whenever the, tap, the temperature itself is lacking. So if you're somebody who cannot keep your temperature above 70, 75 degrees, it would be highly advisable that you do not go past that in general, because you need to be able to have proper coats. Now, the inner coat stacking, somebody just said, does the inner coat have stacking? So I will say this, I have been working with somebody in the industry, I'm not gonna go into detail right now who it is, we'll get into that after the fact, but I've been working with somebody who is a part of the company in the industry who, if you've been in this industry for a long time, you would know his name, and he's extremely, extremely knowledgeable, and we've been having different conversations when it comes to tech, me coming from a manufacturing background, him having manufacturing experience, and or just normal uh, tech level experience with multiple different brands. And we've been kicking just different things around when it comes to products, coats, stacking, recoding, all of those things. And I actually will say that I have learned a lot and I've learned a lot from him when it comes to all kinds of aspects, whether it be from a technical aspect as a tech rep, or when it comes from a manufacturing background from a large paint company, me not coming from a top tier paint company, but more of a second tier paint company that can vary based on knowledge, based on how things are done. Not meaning that the second tier is any less or anything in between, but there is things to be learned if you're open-minded. So I have learned a lot from him. And what I've come to learn mostly from him is, is that stacking does matter no matter what you're using. Can you stack an inner coat clear? Yes. You can stack an inner coat clear if you know what you're doing. Should you stack an inner coat clear if you do not know what you're doing? No, you should not. So a lot of this is going to really come down to what your skill set is and what you're comfortable and what you know how to do. If you want to put three or four coats of an inner coat clear, especially the 1610-00, you can. Follow the proper flash times and you'll be fine. But if you're somebody who's never done it before and you don't really know what you're doing and this is new to you, it would be inadvisable for you to stack that many coats without knowing what you're doing. So I'm gonna stick with the phrase, and maybe it's different from what you're used to me saying in my past experience, 
a lot of this is going to come down to what you know how to do. If you know how to push a product, you're going to know how to push that product. If you don't know how to push a product or you're not comfortable, you don't have the prior experience, you should not. You should stick within two to three coats and you should go from there. And that really should be stressed no matter the brand you're using or what you're doing. Your experience is going to dictate the outcome you're going to have. I could tell 10 people the exact same thing, but 10 people are going to have 10 different experiences with what they're used to using and they're going to have different outcomes. It really does come down to what you're used to doing, what your experience is. So I'm going to stick with when it comes to clears, don't go past three. Unless you know what you're doing, then you can maybe push it. When it comes to intercoat clears, I'm going to say don't go past three. If you know what you're doing and you want to push past a little bit, that's okay. But that's where you should stick when it comes in general. So we covered the clears. We covered the inner coat to the most degree. The inner coat is mixed one to one. You should use the same reducer that you're using with the base coat, meaning the BC series, because it is technically still a clear base coat. You should use the base coat reducer with the inner coat. Um, you should use that in any of the base coats, whether it's the Constellation or the OEM or any of the rest. Now, some people had asked, what is the difference between like the Apollo or the Galaxy or the Constellation? So the Apollo and the Galaxy are technically just offshoots of the Constellation colors. The Apollo is all black base coats with pearls mixed in. The Galaxy is all pearls that you can use as tri-stages. The Constellation is just all of the Constellation colors and the custom line that I created. It's still technically just an offshoot of the Constellation series. That said, they're all mixed one to one. They all kind of fall in line. They can all be over, like stacked over top of each other intermingled, you can do whatever you want to to kind of create that per perfect custom look that you're going for. So they're all compatible, they all can do whatever you want them to do. If you decide that you want to take an Apollo color and you want to intermix a Galaxy Pearl with it, go for it. If you decide that you want to spray an Apollo color and you want to spray a Galaxy Pearl over top of it, go for it. If you decide that you want to take a Galaxy Pearl and you want to mix it into a Constellation color, go for it. Realize anytime you change something up other than what is standard, you need to know what you did. That way you can repair it. As long as you know what you did and you can repair it, go for it. So that's what's kind of cool about this entire line. You can do whatever you want with it. You can interuse it any way you want to. You can intermix it any way you want to to kind of create that special one color. Just know what you did, write it down, and be able to reduplicate it if something were to happen. When it comes to the intercoat clear, um, you can intermix the candy colors that we have. So any of the Orion candies can be mixed into it. Dennis D dog had done a test earlier where he had mixed the candies eight to one. The biggest thing you're going to notice when it comes to Orion candies are, is they're extremely, extremely concentrated. They're very strong. If you've been doing this for a while and you're used to using candies from back in the day, you'll remember that a lot of those candies almost look black. You couldn't even differentiate what they were until you had the proper, I don't know, light to kind of show the color, that's what these will remind you of. You're not even going to be able to hardly tell the color until light source hits it and it reflects in order for you to see that. That's what you're going to notice when it comes to using these candies. They're very dark, they're very intense, and they're going to cover very quickly. I think a 10 to 1 mix ratio is the more advisable than the 8 to 1. 8 to 1 is going to get you there a lot faster, meaning in one coat, you're basically going to feel like, okay, I got where I need to go. That said, candies are kind of meant for you to have that build. A lot of people like to be done in three coats. You could be done in three coats, in my opinion, at a 10 to one. Even Dennis using it, it recommends even a 10 to one would be better. You could take the candy concentrates, you could mix it into an inner coat clear, or you could even mix it into the 1610-01 easy clear, and that would actually give you a 2K version of going over top of a job for a 2K version of a candy. You don't obviously want to use a high solids clear for doing candies because you're doing multiple layers. So the easy clear would be the advisable solids content for you to be able to do in a complete job uh, going with a candy complete. You could be using the serious silver series uh, between fast, um, sorry, fine, medium, and coarse to kind of get you where you want to go. Many people like to use a coarse base as what they're using when it comes to candies. Um, when it comes to the uh, adhesion promoter, we have adhesion promoter. Uh, it's called the Ionic adhesion promoter. Um, something rather cool is we offer in a spray can. So you're going to have the option in a spray can, in a quart, or in a gallon. Uh, obviously, adhesion promoter is ready to spray. 
And when you're using it in a spray can, just do two tack coats, flash it accordingly, go to your base or whatever you wanna do, and you'll have good results. Uh, it goes on with a clear, uh, no color, which a lot of people do wanna know when they're using an adhesion promoter. There is no true color to it. It goes on clear uh, and it sticks and will give you that adhesion to metals or to all different kinds of plastic surfaces and work the way that you want it to. Um, we do have the DTM primers. You're going to notice the 1350 dictates if something is a primer. Doesn't mean it's a direct metal primer, it just means it is in the primer family. So it also means the adhesion promoters, things like that are kind of within that family. They have the same prefix of the 1350. When it comes to the primer or the epoxy, there is one epoxy offered. The 1350 is the prior prefix, and then the 100 is the black. The 150 is the gray, the 200 is the white, and then if you go to 750, that's when you get to the epoxy. Now the epoxy is only offered in gray. It's not a light gray, it's more like a medium standard gray color. It mixes two to one. There is a 30 minute induction time on the epoxy. What does that mean? It means that you have to mix A and B together and they have to sit for 30 minutes prior to use. And then after 30 minutes, you can go put it in your gun and spray it and it will do what it needs to do. The epoxy sprays at a very, very thick viscosity. It is a 65% solids epoxy. You're gonna be needing to use most likely a 1.8 to 2.0 tip to get it to spray the way you want it to. Um, let it sit, it can go over top of various different substrates. It actually even can stick to chrome without being sanded. When I worked with the manufacturers back in September, um, that is something that they explained that it does stick very well to chrome surfaces, which are difficult to get adhesion to. Eventually, will we make a black epoxy? Eventually, as of now, we're just sticking with the gray. Um, when it comes to the 1350 Primer Series, the DTM Primer Series, and you get that in the three colors, you can always intermix the three colors and value shade it the way you want to. So if you wanna you know, darken up the white or lighten up the gray or lighten up the black, you are able to do so by intermixing them all together and value shading it the way you want to. Perfectly fine, no issues doing that. The primer itself does not spray well unless you're going through a 2.0. So that is every single person who sprayed it has tried to go less than a 2.0 at a four to one mix ratio. It does not work well. It works better through a 2.0. That said, if you want to reduce it down, say four one to one, you'll get it to go through a 1.8, no problem. If you want to spray it as a sealer, mix it four one to two, it'll go through the sealer. I mean, go through like a one three one four. If you're going to reduce the primer down, stick with the UR, the 594 UR series reducer, which is the 2K, and then you can do the two parts reducer and turn it into a sealer, which is nice that you can take one product and do two things with it. The biggest thing you're gonna notice is the sealers and the primers spray very smooth. Very, very slick and very smooth. No texture, no grit, no anything is in it. Straining it is gonna take out anything you may have. That said, you're going to notice that they're very clean and you're not gonna have anything in the strainer. That's gonna be a wanted improvement compared to what some people have been using, considering that that was a prior complaint in the past. These are very, very nice, very, very smooth and work perfectly. When it goes to sanding the primer, you're gonna be able to break the primer open perfectly. It's not gonna overly clog or wear out the sandpaper. That's gonna be the biggest thing. When somebody goes to spray primer, yeah, they want the primer to spray nice, they want the primer to sand nice. You wanna save money on your primer, but if you're having to use expensive sandpaper that you burn through, it's almost worth not using cheaper primer because in a sense, you're wasting your money by burning up your expensive sandpaper. So if you have a nice sanding primer, you avoid spending a lot of money on the end in the sandpaper. The biggest thing you're gonna notice when it comes to the Orion primers is the fact that you're not going to burn through your super expensive sandpaper too fast. It sands really, really nice. Dennis D. Dog did a really good job explaining and showing how he didn't have to constantly clean off his sandpaper, how it kept longer than what he was used to using, and how it worked really nice. So I think that's gonna be something that you guys are gonna be very pleasantly surprised with is how nicely and how easily the primers are going to sand. That's a huge plus in my opinion. No one wants to sand hard primer and no one wants to constantly have sandpaper that clogs up and has to constantly keep, keep cleaning and you know blowing off the sandpaper to continue on. So to me, that's gonna be a very wanted thing. Um, when you use it as a sealer, one coat is gonna get you what you need as a sealer and you can move on after flash time into your base coat and then into your clear coat. 
The epoxy can actually be used as a sealer as well. You reduce it down, you can actually turn that into a sealer if you want to. Nice feature is this, this epoxy can actually be used when wet. You can flash it and go straight to your base coat, um, which is a nice feature. Some epoxies can do that, some epoxies cannot. Um, also, when it comes to like the body fillers, you're gonna see we have two different body fillers. All of them come with the cream blue hardener. Um, stick with the standard two to three uh, percent hardener mix ratio and you'll be good to go. There is an anti-corrosion, one meaning you can use it direct to metal if you choose to. Yes, there is a school of thought on if you should go to metal or if you should go over top of epoxy or over top of primer. I'm gonna leave that up to you. You can do what you choose to do, whatever your school of thought is, stick with that. You can use the premium body filler to do whatever you want to. If you want to go to direct metal, you can. If you want to go over top of your epoxy or your primer, you can do that. In my opinion, it's always advisable to go over top of a 2K surface. That said, it's up to you guys to do whatever you want to do. You have that own, you know, your own train of thought when it comes to that. I kind of think that takes care of a lot of what Orion has to offer. So obviously we have candies, we have custom colors, we have OEM colors, we have two different reducers. We have um, the DTM primers, we have the epoxy, we have the adhesion promoter. We also have a couple other things. Some things are not on the website, some things are coming. We do have a single stage in black and white. We are going to have further single stages in different colors, including OEM colors as well. Um, we don't have them on the website yet. We do have a truck bed liner in black that will be on the website as well. Um, and it's not a two, it's not one that takes a hardener. Um, it's a ready to go solvent based uh, bed liner, but it is a nice black durable bed liner. We are going to have a chassis black that's going to be a 1K very durable chassis black. So we are going to have some other things that we're going to bring to the table here, um, but we won't start off right off the bat with that. Um, I am going to have some guys who are going to be testing a bed liner and, and some things like that, and we're going to go from there. But just know that towards the future, there are going to be more things that will be added to the line more things to kind of give you, you know, more options to kind of stick within a system. We wanted to be able to offer that, have proper price point. When you look at the pricing, compared to people in the industry, I think you're gonna feel like, you know, the brand itself has very good pricing. When you realize the people that are backing this brand, and it's not me, but when you realize other people who are very high end, top tier paint level, and that brings credibility and experience and knowledge and things that even I myself do not have to this brand. I really do feel like it makes this brand have so much more credibility than people may even be used to. Uh, and that will be seen to come. There will be tech information coming from who I was discussing earlier. And that weight alone is going to just show you who is backing this brand. It's some of the best in the entire industry for people that who have been in the industry well over 40 years, longer than I have even been alive. That's what we're bringing to the market, but it's being done with a very, very fair price. Uh, Leslie Freed is somebody who brings an OEM level of coloristics to this industry that nobody can touch. She is considered the best. Um, and she brings something to this company that only her can bring to it. So I think that when you guys start using the products and you start you know, seeing how they work, you're gonna realize there's a lot of thought into this. Yes, it happened rather quickly. You have to bear with us on some of it. Some of it we tried very, very quickly to kind of bring together. But it's hard to build a paint company from scratch um, out of nothing in the beginning other than people who know what they're doing and know what, you know, know the industry and know products. That said, there's still time in doing all of this. And I do feel like Orion brought you something to the market probably faster than has ever been done in the history of a paint company. I don't think anyone's come to market um, with something this quickly. Uh, you know, that's been being tested and being proven and things like that. I know you guys are only used to maybe seeing a little bit of the testing through things you've seen through Facebook, but realize that the manufacturer that we're working with manufactures their own resins, does all of that on their own, which no manufacturer does other than two in the entire country. Do they actually manufacture their own resins? So we are manufacturing, they're being manufactured. And then on top of that, all of this is being tested and it's been being tested through extreme measures. When they showed me the way that they do their testing, their accelerated UV testing, everything they did, I was blown away. And I was extremely impressed. And I know you guys will be impressed with the products. Um, I wanna say this when it comes to the hardener. The hardeners all are one temperature. A lot of other companies in the industry do that as well. 
but you're going to realize that the way they're formulated, the way the technology is in them, they're going to flow the way you want them to. If you really feel like you need to slow them down, you can use a slower reducer to do so, but they are designed to flow and to function and things like that. People who have been using the products and been testing have been extremely impressed with the way that everything has been flowing and everything cuts and buffs. I think you guys are going to be very, very impressed. So anyways, double check any questions you have. Look on the website, see what there is. Like Ronnie just said, look on the website, see what there is. A lot of stuff is there. We're going to change some things up. Sheree's done a really good job with the website. Her sister Ashley has also done a really good job with the website. We're going to be adding more things to it. Candies have no pictures. That's coming. Um, there's probably at least 10 to 15 more custom colors in the Constellation line that I haven't even shown or sprayed out for you guys to see. Those will be being listed as well. Um, so, you know, anything new to come, I'll be, you know, first to bring that to you guys and anything that gets listed on the website, we'll be sure to tell you guys that free shipping is at 350. So if you hit the 350 threshold, you get free shipping. If you're in Texas or New Jersey, you will pay tax. So the nexus on how taxes are working is if there is a location in either one of the states, you have to pay taxes. So if you're in Texas or New Jersey, you have to pay taxes. The other remaining states do not have to pay taxes. Um, if you are in Hawaii, Alaska, or Canada, hit me up. We'll work out the shipping. You have to pay whatever the cost of shipping is, and we'll go through that for those to be available. Um, when it comes to the DTM gallons and even the epoxy and even the fast clear, they will all be available in gallon kits. To start off, we didn't have that ability. They were in quarts. You can buy four if you want to equal the price of a gallon i think it works out to two dollars and change more to buy it so we didn't price it so expensive that you wouldn't be able to afford it um gabriel if you're spending like under 100 bucks it's 15. the most expensive shipping price that there is uh is 25 dollars. so you'll never pay more than 25 dollars. after 25 dollars, it's free um, the way we did it, the cheaper the shipping or the cheaper your invoice, the cheaper the shipping, the more expensive, the more the weight, the more expensive, but it will never go over the $25 threshold. Um, and shipping, when you ask how fast it is, everything's one day. So the really cool thing with Texas when it comes to shipping is basically you're in the center of the state. East coast, west coast is almost divided in half. So basically, nobody has more than three days when it comes to shipping transit times. I, of anybody I've looked at, I think maybe only Oregon and Washington State can occasionally be four days. I think one or two places in Maine was maybe four days. But other than that, everything is basically one, two, or three days. Even certain places in Oklahoma, Louisiana, all of those are actually one day. Places in Arizona are one day. So it kind of depends on where you're going. Um, you can go all the way to certain places in Virginia, Tennessee, Florida, things like that, and have two-day shipping. So it just depends. I've seen places in Oregon that are three days. I've seen places that are four days. That said, if you were on the West Coast or the East Coast, you'd be looking at seven-day transit times, depending on if you're going coast to coast. We're cutting that way, way down. So... Four days is the most you're ever going to have to wait for something to come, no matter what state you're in, other than Canada, Alaska, or Hawaii. Um, I'm pretty sure that Leslie had said if anybody wants something brought to Hawaii, she would prefer to hand deliver that. Can't really blame her. So hopefully this has been quick enough just for you guys to get a little bit more your head wrapped around with what Orion is offering what the mixed ratios are, what reducers we recommend, why there's one temperature hardener, things like that. A lot more is going to come. A lot more is going to change. A lot more availability is going to happen. This is the very beginning. Bear with us. It's weird times, and we were thinking of launching a lot sooner. A lot has changed since then. Um, a lot of the pricing on everything has gone up. We're not going to increase our pricing at any point right now. We're sticking at where we are. So we're doing everything we can to just kind of keep everything where we're at and still remain one of the cheapest high-end brands on the market. When it comes down to it, the people who back this brand specialize in quality. So that's what we're, you know, looking to do. Anyways, I think, okay, clears go by solids. So, okay, I will touch on this. So the highest solids clear is 49%. The lowest solids clear is right at like 33. So that's where they range in between there. So the highest is 49. The lowest is like 33. Um, so realize, you know, that when it comes to, um, stacking your clears, we've had, a, I had a really good discussion with the main tech guy here. 
Um, and he explained a lot of things. And really and truly, I don't care whose clear it is, you really should never go over three coats. Just for curing and thorough curing, you should never really go over that. If you want to sand it down and continue after that, you can. But when it really comes to not staying soft and having the proper thorough cure, you should stick with three coats. That's just advisable. And really and truly, when you think about it and you speak to anybody from any top tier paint company, they always say to stick within three coats for the same reason, because they want to see thorough curing happen where you have no issues down the road. Okay, I think that's all I really have to say for tonight. Please bear with us when it comes to shipping. We are going to be shipping. You are going to be getting tracking information and things like that. Some things are going to logistically work better as time comes. Um, we're short-staffed. Me and Sean are doing our best to make everything come together. We really are busting ass to make this come together. We really, really are. So please be patient. Please stand with us. Everything's going to come together. I'm so stoked that the subscription boxes were a hit. I was concerned that you guys would feel like they weren't. They will get better. We will add more things and make them more creative. And every single month, you're going to get a different color. Um, and I'm going to keep mixing it up where we break it up between the different hundred. I'm going to do contests where, you know, we see what people have created with the, con with the actual subscription boxes. So we appreciate you guys. Leslie appreciates you. Sean does. It's all coming together. It's been a lot of hard work. It's been a lot of stress. It really has been for all of us but we're finally there, we're on the home stretch, and we wouldn't be here without you guys. So take care, we appreciate you guys, and have a good night. Thanks guys, bye.